Levante David is out for Sunday's game against the Indianapolis Colts. I'll tell you how the Bucs can overcome such a huge loss. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this Friday live episode of Locked On Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every single day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow along on Twitter. I am Jay Yark. I am James Yarko at Jay Yarko underscore Bucks, deputy editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com, here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers. And of course, I would like to share my appreciation for your continued support of the show. And right now, you can join the Locked On Bucks Insiders, where you get the news, the inside scoop, and exclusive content delivered directly to your phone. Plus, one-on-one -on -one conversations with me via text message, and I'm always excited to welcome new insiders to the club. I've had great interactions with the insiders we already have that go far beyond just the Buccaneers, just football, and just what happens on this show. So join the Locked On Bucks insiders now and be in the know all the time. Just go to joinsubtext.com slash LockedOnBucks to sign up. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today and get 10% off your first month. Coming up on this episode, I'm going to give you my key to victory and some predictions. But first, we do have to talk about the injury situation for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So ruled out. On Sunday against the Indianapolis Colts are linebacker Levante David and cornerback Jamel Dean. Questionable Carlton Davis with a hip injury, Devin White with a foot injury, Mike Green with a calf injury, and Logan Hall with an illness. Todd Bowles said to the media on Friday that all of these questionable players are going to be game time decisions. Then cleared on the injury report are Chris Godwin, Robert Hainsey, Ryan Neal, and Tristan Wirfs. So all of those guys will suit up and play. The biggest problem, of course, is the loss of Levante David. He is the heart and soul. He is Mr. Reliable. He, You can count on him to put up the same numbers each and every week to make the same plays each and every week. He is as consistent as they come in the NFL as far as the linebacker position is concerned. Losing him against a team like the Indianapolis Colts that have Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss is huge. Then you compound the problem by potentially not having Devin White as well. We talked about it earlier in the week. The Bucs promoted linebacker J.J. Russell from the practice squad. You have K.J. Britt. You have Servassier Dennis. You have these other guys that can step in, but none of those guys are Levante David. None of those guys are Devin White. Even though Devin White has struggled throughout the year playing through injury, even at these guys' best right now, they do not bring you what Devin White can bring you. So you have this huge problem now of trying to turn the Colts into a one-dimensional team without at least one, maybe both, inside linebackers. Now, the loss of Jamel Dean for as up and down of a year as he's had is also problematic because you have Carlton Davis, who is a game-time decision. You have Zion McCollum, who can come in. The, the cornerback situation for the Buccaneers is not good. That's not one of the places that they have a lot of depth. I know Evan Klosky on Wednesdays has talked about how he loves the depth of this team. Cornerback is not one of those spots where we love the depth on this team. So 
when you're going up against Michael Pittman Jr., when you're going up against an emerging player like Josh Downs, when they have Alec Pierce, who has been coming on over the course of the last couple of games, it's a problem when you're missing one of your two starting corners. It just is. So, you know, a lot of problems for the Buccaneers here, but the Colts aren't without their own problems. They are going to be without cornerback Juju Brents, who's dealing with a quad injury, center Ryan Kelly with a concussion, and tight end Drew Ogletree. Questionable is former Buccaneer linebacker Grant Stewart, who is dealing with an illness, and then safety Rodney Thomas, who has a knee injury, was cleared and will play. So let's talk for a minute about the advantages that the Buccaneers are going to have. And first and foremost, it's going to be with Vita Vea, Kalijah Kansi, Greg Gaines, these guys up front who are going up against a Indianapolis Colts offensive line that will be without their starting center. Quentin Nelson was already going to have his hands full with Vita Vea. Now he's not going to have nearly as much help as he would if Ryan Kelly was playing. So now Vita Vea is going to be able to take advantage of that. Maybe not on the stat sheet. I talked about it on the crossover episode with Jake Arthur. He may not show up a lot on the stat sheet, but what he's going to do is he's going to chew up Quentin Nelson. He's going to chew up whoever else is coming in to help Quentin Nelson. That's going to free up opportunities for guys like Kalijah Kansi, like Servassier Dennis, though I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit, but you can bring in Antoine Winfield Jr. You can bring Yaya Diaby and Shaq Barrett and all these guys. They don't have to come from the edge. You can spin them inside and use a lane created by Vita Vea to get after Gardner Minshew to stuff Jonathan Taylor, things of that nature. And then, of course, Juju Brents being out. The Colts are already one of the worst secondaries in the National Football League. Losing a starting corner now, that's an advantage for Mike Evans. It's an advantage for Chris Godwin. It's an advantage for Trey Palmer. These guys are going to be able to take advantage of an already bad secondary, now getting even weaker. So the Bucs have their problems. The Colts have their problems, all stemming from injury, and it's going to weigh heavily in this matchup. I do want to jump over to the chat real quick before we move on. Richard in the chat says, hope you had a great holiday. I did, Richard, and I hope all of you had a great one as well. It was nice and relaxing, even though it was a little hectic making all the food early in the day, especially when my skillet broke and I had to race to my parents' house and, and borrow one over there. But all the food was delicious. The family was great. We played some games. We watched football. It was a great, great time. Demon Hunter also in the chat saying that he hoped that I had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Demon, I hope you did as well. Really, uh, really enjoyed my time. David Stacks in the chat says, what's up, fellas? Well, it's just one fella here. Uh, David Harrison was flying back from Dallas because of the Commanders-Cowboys game, then had to do an emergency pod because the Commanders fired everybody. Uh, if you were a defensive coach, you're gone. And so poor David had to uh, to scramble and get some things together. Um, Flash in the chat says, Coach Bowles will play Devin White injured, Bucks lose. I don't know. It, it may not be up to, to Coach Bowles whether or not Devin plays. If he feels he can't go, he won't go. And I'm going to talk more about that situation coming up here in just a moment. That is next here on Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Score this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are projected to lose a second straight road game facing the Indianapolis Colts this weekend. And right now, the line has the Bucs as two-and-a-half-point underdogs. But if you think they can pull off the upset, Sign up, drop that money line bet on Tampa Bay, and if they do it, you win as well. If you're a Buccaneers fan, but you think there's no way that they can upset the Colts, drop that money line bet on Indy, and you might just get your silver lining. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, 
player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and score this NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listener interview every single day. Every day, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sto- sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. My key to the game in this one is a little different. And I'm going, I'm I'm gonna say what it is. And some of you are immediately going to tell me that I'm insane uh in the chat, but that's okay. Stick with me here. My key to the game is not to be aggressive. Do not be aggressive. Levante David is out and Devin White is a game time decision. The biggest key to winning this game is to force the ball into the hands of Gardner Minshew, not to let Jonathan Taylor run wild through the second and third levels of the defense, breaking off explosive plays and keeping the Colts two dimensional. Todd Bowles has to keep the inside linebackers disciplined. So that means do not send Servassier Dennis. Do not send Devin White if he plays, J.J. Russell if he doesn't, on a bunch of blitzes and leave the middle of the field open, relying on players like Ryan Neal to come up and make plays in space. Leave your pressure to guys like Shaq Barrett, Joe Tryon Shoyinka, Yaya Diaby, Winfield and Christian Izian on occasion, as well as your upfront guys, your Vita Veyas, your Greg Gaineses, your Kalijah Kansies, your William Golstons. Let your linebackers be the spies. Kind of like go back to the old school Bucks days where Derek Brooks against the Atlanta Falcons would hover right there in the middle of the field and wait for Michael Vick to make his move and then pounce. That's exactly how the inside linebackers on Sunday have to play this game. Just let them focus on the tight ends and the running backs, and then see ball, get ball. As soon as the running backs or the tight ends have the ball in their hand, that's when you let them loose, get after them, bring them down for a minimal to you know a conservative game. There's no need to get cute. There's no need to get fancy. In fact, that is the worst possible thing that you could do in this game when you've lost your most reliable and consistent player over the course of the last decade plus. Servassier Dennis can make splash plays. We know this. David and I have talked about it numerous times when we would watch pit games to watch what Kalijah Kansen can do. Servassier Dennis can pop off the screen. But in this game, He needs to stay at home and be ready to take down Jonathan Taylor or Zach Moss for minimal gains. You force the Colts into second and third and long situations. Then you can pin your ears back. Then you can get after Gardner Minshew and you can create chaos. Minshew can be coaxed into mistakes when he's under pressure or when he's trying to escape and buy time for his receivers down the field. Minshew's been pressured eight on 18.9% of dropbacks this season, and he's been sacked 15 times. He only has eight touchdowns to six interceptions on the season, and he has thrown the fifth most interceptable passes among quarterbacks this season. So an opportunistic defense like the Bucs with Antoine Winfield Jr., with uh, Carlton Davis, with D. Delaney, with Christian Izian, who has made splash plays, they can take advantage of a Gardner Minshew who's trying to force the issue on the second and longs, third and longs, to try to get the ball into the hands of his playmakers. Rewind the clock two years ago when even... Carson, or, yeah, it was Carson Wentz 
tried to push the issue as the Bucs were formulating a comeback in Indianapolis, tried to force the ball down the field to Michael Pittman for a big explosive play. Antoine Winfield Jr. was there to get the interception, which led to a Leonard Fournette touchdown on the ensuing drive. So it's not going to get to the point where you're getting after Gardner Minshew, you're creating those interceptable passes, uh, you know, those situations, if Jonathan Taylor is dictating the pace of play and gaining big chunks on the ground, setting up second and four or third and two. If Jonathan Taylor is able to continue to get decent yardage at a clip, if he's averaging four or five yards a carry, you're not going to be able as a defense to force Minshew into mistakes, which he is prone to do. You have to stay disciplined in the middle of the field with, again, I say if Devin White plays, but with Servassier Dennis, with Devin White, with J.J. Russell, with K.J. Britt, stay disciplined and stay home. Force the run game not to work by not over-pursuing by not getting baited by play action. You have to stay right there, ready to make plays and force the Colts offense into second and eight, into third and seven. And then Minshew is going to make a mistake. Very few defenses in the NFL this season have been more opportunistic than the Buccaneers. And this game is primed for them to be able to get multiple takeaways against this quarterback, keeping the ball in the hands of their offense, allowing them to chew up clock and take advantage of a poor Colts secondary, of a weakened front seven. Now that they have gotten rid of Shaquille Leonard, you can utilize Rashad White in the passing game as you have before, allowing him to make plays in space with his legs, have these 12, 13, 14 play drives that end in points, and then as you continue, you get that three-point lead. You get that seven-point lead. You get that 10-point lead. Now even more pressure is on Gardner Minshew to push the ball down the field, allowing guys like Yaya Diaby, Shaq Barrett, Vita Vea, Servasi Dennis to make plays and force more takeaways by an opportunistic secondary. And I realize that goes against every fiber of Todd Bowles being because he is an aggressive defensive coach. He likes to get after the quarterback there. I, I think there's only two teams in the NFL that have blitzed more than the Buccaneers. But in this game, in this situation without Levante David, that is a recipe for disaster. With that, I'm going to jump over to the chat one more time. Uh, we got, we got Sal in the chat that says, you look like you had a good time, James. Look, man, I am so tired. Work was a nightmare this week. And then my stupid self quick, you know, window into my life, my stupid self decided it was going to be a good idea to go to a Dick sporting goods warehouse store near my house because my son needs stuff for hockey. And I found it. And I proceeded to stand in line for two hours and 37 minutes because I'm an idiot. So, yeah, I am completely and in, in totally wiped out. Thank goodness the weekend is coming up. We got David Stacks in the chat saying, let the D rush the hole that Vita will open. Yes, I agree. You need to take advantage of what Vita Vea is going to do, but you need to do so without taking Servassier Dennis or Devin White or J.J. Russell out of the middle of the field. Those guys have to continue to play center field right there in order to minimize the impact that the Colts rushing attack can have because make no mistake about it, Jonathan Taylor is still very good and Zach Moss has had a resurgence in Indianapolis and he has been very good. So, Use that that Vita Vea advantage that you have, but make sure that you keep a center fielder there ready to make a play if need be. Uh, we got Demon Hunter in the chat saying, feed Chris and Mike. No other wide receiver should get a single target this week. I'm not going to go that far, but this is a game where Chris Godwin and Mike Evans should each come away with double-digit targets with as bad and beat up as this Colts secondary is. 
And then uh, we got San Anto Gato saying Canales needs to start off strong. If the Bucks can come out and uh, get a quick score, any kind of points on the opening drive, it's really going to set the tone for the rest of the game. It can be a field goal. That is legitimately fine. If they can come out in their opening drive with and come away with points, that will be huge moving forward into the rest of the game. Daytona Dad in the chat. Hello, James Yarchu. Uh, does it bother you when people pronounce your last name that way? No, it doesn't. I'm so used to it now. My last name has had a billion different pronunciations uh, over the course of my nearly you know, 40 years on this earth. And uh, only one of those pronunciations is actually correct. So, yeah, it it doesn't bother me anymore. It, it really, truly doesn't. Uh, I just always wonder why people don't clarify beforehand. Like, it takes four seconds. Hey, just to make sure your last name is pronounced. I mean, it is what it is, though. It, it honestly doesn't bother me at, at this stage in my life anymore. But Coming up next, I will be giving you my predictions and one of David's because, again, he's been on airplanes all day and has been busy, so I didn't get all of his predictions. But predictions coming up next here on Locked on Bucks. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I look forward to the holiday season every year, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and of course, my two stepson's birthdays all happen within about 30 days of each other. And then there's the fresh feeling of a new year that comes right after it. But it also comes during the final regular season stretch of the NFL schedule, my son's insanely busy hockey schedule, and I start to get ready for the following NFL season. The bottom line is, it can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some anxiety about it. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and sometimes to make you feel grounded and to give you the tools to manage everything going on around you. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma either. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. wrapping things up here on a live Friday edition of the Locked on Bucks podcast. And the Bucks play the Colts this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time inside Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Catch every snap of the Buccaneers hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the Sirius XM app. Just search Buccaneers. And while you're there, you might just hear a familiar voice during the game. Uh, before I get to my predictions real quick, I want to jump over here. I saw Richard in the chat with a question. He says, is this a game to see the hype about Servassier Dennis? Possibly, but I don't think so. For all the reasons that I just outlined in that last segment, this isn't the kind of game where I want to see Servassier Dennis being sent on these blitzes. He can absolutely make a big play. Um, but he's you know, he's an incredibly gifted athlete, and I mean incredibly gifted. This guy is borderline athletic freak, but he's still a very raw NFL talent. So you don't want to ask too much of him and put him in a situation where he makes a mistake and gets inside of his own head. Keep it simple for him. You know, it's when I was a chef, I had a a, a professor pounded into my head, literally would take a rubber spatula and whack me in the head and say, kiss method, kiss method, kiss method, which for those of you that don't know what that is, the kiss method means keep it simple, stupid. That's what you need to do with Servassier Dennis in this game because a huge weight is being thrown on his shoulders. Let his athletic ability take over in natural situations. Do not try to push the issue unless you see an opening that you can expose later in the game. 
I think it's best if you just let him read and react rather than trying to force him into certain situations. With that, let's go ahead and get over to predictions. I want to see you guys dropping your bold predictions, your player predictions, and your score predictions in the chat. But my bold prediction for this one, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans both go over 100 yards and both get a touchdown in this one. I've already, I've already talked about Juju Brents being out for this game for the Indianapolis Colts. On top of that, they bleed passing yards on defense this year. As I've mentioned also on this show before, my boss is a huge Colts fan, and he and I love to chat on Mondays about how bad the football teams are that we follow at times. And the one thing that he has said over and over and over to me this season is our defense is terrible. They have allowed the fifth most explosive plays in the NFL this season, and they have allowed the fifth most explosive passing plays in the NFL this season. You can take advantage of the Indianapolis Colts secondary, and you have the weapons in Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Sprinkle in Trey Palmer, sprinkle in Devin Tompkins, sprinkle in Kate Otten. And then, of course, you have your safety valve of running through the air with Rashad White. There will be explosive plays on that field on Sunday, and the Buccaneers can get quite a few of them. Look for big days out of the dynamic duo of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. David's bold prediction is that Zion McCollum gets an interception because he told me on this show last week, from now on, his bold prediction is always Zion McCollum will get an interception because he's bound to be right at some point, and he may be right this week. Zion McCollum is going to step in and start for Jamel Dean, who will be out. Carlton Davis might be out as well. We don't know. He is a game-time decision. He is questionable to play, but we know for sure one of the two starting corners is out in this one. Zion McCollum will get plenty of opportunity. It'll just be interesting to see if he's lined up against Michael Pittman Jr. or Josh Downs. Josh Downs has been a reception machine. He is the Colts' Chris Godwin. He's going to get those tough yards. He's the move-the-sticks guy. He gets those tough catches over the middle, has made some incredibly acrobatic receptions this season. So Josh Downs is a legitimate threat for the Indianapolis Colts, keep your eye on him. It's not just Michael Pittman in the passing game anymore. My predicted player of the game, Kalijah Cansey. And it goes back to what I talked about with Vita Vea going up against Quentin Nelson, but the Colts not having Ryan Kelly there. This is an opportunity now for Kalijah Cansey to take advantage of what Vita Vea can do for this defensive line in eating up blocks. And if you're not sending Servasier Dennis, if you're not sending Devin White, if you, you know, if Todd Bowles listens to me and my key to victory here and those inside linebackers stay at home, you can do all sorts of fun things with Kalijah Cansey. You can have him rolling inside on some stunts. You can have him spinning outside while you have Shaq or Yaya rolling inside. There's a lot of opportunity here for Todd Bowles to get creative without taking those inside linebackers out of the middle of the field. And Kalijah Cansey gets better by the week. I think he has a big opportunity against this Colts offensive line to be a game wrecker and force Gardner Minshew into some of those mistakes, force some tackles for loss against Moss and Taylor. Kalijah Cansey is in for a huge game on Sunday. And then finally, for those that didn't hear my Crossover Thursday episode with Jake Arthur, I do recommend you go back and listen to that. Some great stuff from him about the Indianapolis Colts. But I predict that it's go the the game is going to be decided by the leg of a kicker, and I'm going with my Illini guy, Chase McLaughlin, to uh, to send the Bucks home victorious, 24 to 23. Going to jump over to the chat real quick to see what some of you are saying. Daytona Dad, uh, also sorry I missed your 1500th episode last week. Thank you for all the information and content. No worries, Daytona Dad. Appreciate you being here uh, pretty much each and every day. You are an everyday or even if you're not always in the live. I appreciate you. And his bold prediction is 400 passing yards from Baker Mayfield, who is also his player of the game. He's taking the Colts. 31 to 28. We got Jean Philippe Martin says, No way we lose against Gardner Minshew. I don't know, man. 
stranger things have happened. You know, the, the Bucs seem to find a way to lose to quarterbacks that they shouldn't and beat quarterbacks that they shouldn't. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. Um, we got Edward in the chat saying first time liver. Well, welcome Edward. I appreciate you jumping in on the live. Hope you become an every liver from now on. Mike, uh, you know, a, a locked on bucks insider says the bucks win 30 to 21. Sal says bucks win 24 to 17. Richard predicts another two sack day for Yaya Diaby. Uh, Richard picks the Bucks to win 26 to 20. And finally, <laughs> we got Jean-Philippe again. James, are we pronouncing your last name Yarko or Yarsho? It is Yarko. Um, so yeah, Yarko, easy breezy. But again, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you say Yarcho. Um, real quick update before we get out of here about the post-game reaction live. My intent is... And my goal is to go live from Lucas Oil Stadium. However, I am at the mercy of space availability and Wi-Fi connection. So I will keep you all updated as best I can on both Twitter. And then, of course, my Locked On Bucks insiders will get text messages sent directly to their phone about the status of the live episode. If I cannot go live from Lucas Oil, looking at about... 9, 10 o'clock at night before I'll be able to go live after I come back home, you know, get all the post game stuff done and everything. But again, I will keep you all updated as best I can as to when I will go live with the post game reaction episode following the Bucks and the Colts. If you want to become a locked on Bucks insider, of course, go to join at subtext.com slash locked on Bucks, all kinds of fun interactions there with the Locked On Bucks insiders. I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, that is going to do it for this episode. So in the meantime, check out everything that I'm doing over at BucksNation.com. Follow everything on Twitter at Locked On Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. Thank you so much for joining me right here on Locked On Bucks part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.